Before anything, it's important to be aware that there are two different shield types that are used by enemies in Genshin Impact. The first are shields used by Fatui skirmishers, which I usually refer to as Fatui shields. Second are shields used by all other enemies, such as Lava Churls, Abyss Mages, Whopper Flowers, Assassin Mages, and so on. I usually refer to these as Abyss Shields because they are most notoriously used by Abyss Mages. These different types of shields have slightly different weaknesses. If you ever felt like you finally figured out which element is strong against a certain shield, and then later on found that it wasn't really working, you weren't crazy, you were probably facing different types of shields with different weaknesses despite the shields having the same element. With that out of the way, I'll first go over the weaknesses for the Fatui shields, which I think are actually easier to remember. Cryo shields are weak to Pyro. Pyro shields are weak to Hydro. Hydro shields are weak to Electro. It's a common misconception that the Hydro shield is weak to Cryo or Dendro, but with a simple test, we can see that neither are nearly as effective as Electro. Electro shields are weak to Cryo. The Electro shield is another one that gives players a tough time in my experience. Just remember that it's weak to Cryo only and Pyro will not be very effective against it. You might notice that these four weaknesses form a cycle with each other, which is why I think this type of shield is actually easier to remember. I made this simple diagram that you can download in the video description in case a visual representation helps you remember it better. Although these shield weaknesses are relatively simple, they're also less forgiving. If you try to break a Fatui shield with the wrong element, it'll take about 20 times longer than if you had used the correct element. And finally, the last Fatui skirmisher shield, Geo, is weak to heavy attacks. Heavy attacks are a broad category that includes Geo damage, Claymore attacks, melee plunging attacks, overload, and some catalyst charge attacks and skills. If an attack can break crystal ores, it can be considered a heavy attack and it'll also break geo shields. Now let's review the weaknesses for abyss shields. Cryo shields are still weak to pyro. Pyro shields are still weak to hydro. Hydro shields are weak to dendro. Dendro shields are weak to pyro. Electro shields are equally weak to Pyro, Cryo, and Dendro. Even though the three are equally effective on paper, Pyro is actually a little stronger in practice because it triggers an overloaded reaction which deals an extra instance of Pyro damage and chips the shield down a little more. And finally, Geo shields are again weak to heavy attacks. One major difference is that Abyss shields are much more forgiving than Fatui shields. Even if you don't use the exact elemental weakness for a shield, you may still be able to break it in a reasonable amount of time. More specifically, I want to mention two elements that you could use as viable shield weaknesses aside from the hard counters that I just went over. The first one is Cryo against Hydro shields. Cryo is half as effective as Dendro, but still much more effective than Pyro and Electro, so it's still a great option to use against Hydro shields. Some players may even prefer Cryo because it has the added benefit of freezing the enemy, which can make the fight a lot easier. The other element is Electro, which you might have noticed is not a counter to any of the Abyss shields. Even though it's not a hard counter to any shield, it's often the second best option for most of the shields. In this regard, you can think of Electro as a kind of jack of all trades when it comes to breaking Abyss shields. For example, Electro could be useful if you have to break several different shield elements in the same fight. Even though Electro isn't the hard counter to any of them, it can deal with all of them in a reasonable amount of time. One element that I didn't mention at all in this video is Anemo, which some people might find surprising. Anemo is actually very ineffective at breaking any shield on its own. However, if there is another element on the field, Anemo can trigger a swirl reaction with that element to be a potentially strong shield breaker. AoE and Nemo attacks can be especially effective if there are multiple shields of different elements very close to each other. In this example, Sucrose's skill triggers a swirl reaction with each of the three shields. The Hydro Swirl counters the Pyro Shield, the Pyro Swirl counters the Cryo Shield, and the Cryo Swirl counters the Hydro Shield. 
In situations like this, where the shield elements counter each other and they're all close together, an MO is very effective at breaking all of the shields at once. Hopefully that covers just about every shield you might encounter in Genshin Impact and all the different ways that you can deal with them. If I did miss a shield, then first of all sorry, and second, feel free to mention it in the comments so that everyone else can see too. As I mentioned earlier, I made a little diagram that I hope can act as a kind of cheat sheet to help you remember these shield weaknesses. The link is in the video description, so you're more than welcome to download a copy or share it with someone else if you feel like it could be helpful. And as always, thank you so much for watching.